You probably don't know Maru. I certainly wasn't aware of the character, or indeed the franchise. This was part of the Jaja Maru series of largely Japan exclusive games, all that is except this one. You play as this very 90s looking kid with a baseball cap called Maru, and guess what? You gotta rescue Cory, your girlfriend. You move from left to right for the most part, through six worlds, while firing shurikens at people. Oh yeah, Maru's a ninja too, because, you know, 90s. Don't worry about the storylines. What's unusual about this game is there's no score, just a health bar. You start with 200 health, but it can go all the way up to 999. Killing an enemy releases their soul, which you can somehow absorb to gain a little health. When you get hit, your health is barely scratched, making this game criminally easy. Even the boss attacks don't really hurt you too bad. Although nigh invincible, your character is only a little dude, but he can jump incredibly high, quite often he'll clear the top of the screen. A lot of enemies are avoidable this way, meaning you can cheap cut your way through much of the levels if you want. There's no ammo for your weapons, which is nice, and you can spam that button to rapidly throw many stars, killing most enemies instantly. This game's so easy that it's almost cruel. There's a plethora of other weapons to collect as well, including a weapon that replaces your shurikens with a load of meteors flying forwards, as well as one that casts down a vertical streak of lightning. Pretty epic stuff, commanding the elements like that. Makes you wonder how someone with such powers was dense enough to let his girlfriend get kidnapped. There's a wagon thing that makes you invincible for a while, and also one who summons Maru's mate, or brother, or whoever, who sort of turns up and does his thing, and then disappears. That's not nearly all of them, there are a lot of power-ups. At the midway point in each stage, there's a mini-boss, all of whom are a doddle to beat. They'll give you a weapon that you need to murder each respective end-boss. Really good of them to keep each major enemy's Achilles heel in the hands of a slightly weaker enemy. Great evil genius planning right there. So, the six worlds you play in are, in order, North America, Romania, Greece, Egypt, Brazil, and Japan. Greece and Egypt remain in the ancient worlds that they're famous for, and of course Dracula is still roaming about the Carpathians. Like I say, don't worry about the storylines. If you need to cross the ocean at all between countries, i.e. to get from North America to Romania or Egypt to Brazil, this is done by swimming. I mean, yeah, that's how I would do it. This takes the form of a shark harpooning mini-game. They love that spearfishing thing in Japan, don't they? This is the most confusing part of the whole game. Why not take a plane, first of all? It's going to take Maru years to swim across the Atlantic, by which time Cory's probably going to have Stockholm syndromed all over the place and married her captor. What does Maru have against sharks, anyway? So, he can fire throwing stars and command lightning at his overland enemies, but now, underwater, he has to use a trident? The whole minigame is stupid, the hit detection is terrible, and if you die, you actually do game over here. Just stop it. I have to say, Mara's mission does look pretty cool. The backgrounds are varied, and they manage to feature a lot of sprites on the screen without any considerable slowdown or flicker. The sound effects are superb, and the music is like a Double Dragon soundtrack with a comedic twist. Actually, that's not a bad way of describing the whole thing. As you progress through the game, there's some lovely variation. The third world, Greece, has this strange anti-gravity thing, like we saw later on with Wendy Every Which Way, or VVVVVV, where you can invert gravity and walk on the ceiling. Very cool. Also in World 4, Egypt, you'll come across Sphinx. You have to answer a riddle, and if you get it right, you can skip her battle. So look, Mara's mission is a walk in the park, and it's completely daft in places, but it's a lot of fun to blast through. There's nothing to take seriously in this game, although I do have to ask, what in the green hell is wrong with that cover art?